of hole. <laughs> oh, nah, that's good already. Like a fountain, or are these just trees? It's geysers. You are at the edge of a massive hole. The dirt gives way to rock as the ground sinks into darkness. Huh. The computer tied to your upper back slickens with sweat in the afternoon sun. The rope slung around your shoulder has slipped under the strap of your backpack, digging uncomfortably against your collarbone. Um, you decide. It's all you. Yell into the hole first to see if there are pirates! Yeah. I only understood you as far as wanting to yell. Uh, yell. Any pirates down there. No response. Sorry, kid. You're batting zero today. At least we know there's no pirates! We should use the tools we've gathered. Yes. Shine the lamp into the hole? Why? Why? Your lamp is now on. Shine lamp in hole. The lamplight only reaches a few yards down the hole, where the rock is coated in a slimy black mold. You can tell that the walls are too slick to climb safely without assistance. Try, try using the rope to climb down safely. Tie rope to tree. The rope is tied snugly to a tree trunk. Damn. We played these games before, we know what's up. Your feet slip a few times on the slimy rock, but you remain stable. Lula and Joseph descends carefully after you. I can't say things. In bed quilt. Hmm. Whoa. Okay. The hell? Underwater or underground. Cave, cave. formations. Stalactites. Stalactites and stalagmites. Stalagmites. Those stalags are so tight. You are in bed quilt, a long east-west passage with holes everywhere. Joseph and Lula remove the computer equipment they are carrying on their backs and begin setting up. That's the last trip, so everything's down here now. Set up the gear. Set up gear. I only understood you as far as wanting to set the up above. Set the, set the up oh. above? Lula looks pensive. Ask her where the treasure is! Ask Lula where the treasure is. Ha, if we knew that, we wouldn't have to set up down here. I know you think this environment will help our project get us in touch with a deep romantic reverence for some kind of profound natural spookiness, but I was more comfortable in our lab. The university picked the worst time to cut our funding. Typical institutional stinginess and academic politics. I mean, I felt like we were getting really close to something. Something. Anyway, I don't know if it's sustainable down here, you know, to live and work here together. <coughs> I, don't, I don't think there's much left. I think we need to push this forward. Let's do it. Okay. Uh... What's the gear they're carrying? Ask Lula about gear. Sure, Donald. We may as well take the inventory. I've got the tape machine and the synthesizer parts we borrowed from the School of Music. It's all tuned up to my voice, so we won't have to type so much. Joseph has his slate and, a pun and the punched cards he's transcribed from the poems we read him. He's got the typewriter and the paper tape reader. And you've got the CRT display. How's your back holding up? Joseph looks uncomfortable. I'm starting to dip into uh, what's-his-face from South Park. Jealous. Hey, Donald, can you help me uh, wire up these generators? I'll assemble the synthesizer, but I could use some help with the serial interface if you have time. You hear an unfamiliar echo from a tunnel to the east. <coughs> Maybe if we help Lula, she'll have some more to tell us. 
help Lula. Thanks, Donald. I can never remember which color lead goes to which pin. That's dangerous. Lula begins unpacking a box of wires and terminals. Do you think there are paintings down here? Cave paintings, I mean. Maybe some old pottery shards from when the world was young and early men and women huddled in these caves too. Do you know, I think cultural fossils are the saddest fossils. Sadder than animal remains, I mean. We might come across a patri petrified mollusk or a partial dinosaur footprint, and we say, there was a point of contact here where a body touched the earth, and maybe there's a little bit of evidential garbage, but the life who owned that body never cared and has moved on anyway. And that's the end of it. But suppose I shine my lantern in one of these walls, and I see a crude painting, thousands of years old, two men and a woman, charcoal and blood, on rock. Someone put that there to keep something on the rock after she passed. A hope, a relationship, or a moment. A worry, maybe a regret. God, <laughs> this is killing my throat. I can take over for a while, but voice if you want. <coughs> yeah, okay. <clears throat> she, she made a painting to keep something alive for her. But like that dead mollusk and that itinerant dinosaur, she had to move on. Whatever it was, it's gone. And now we're looking at this painting, this dangling copy with no original. You are interrupted by the ominous echo of a grating, scraping sound from the east, louder than before. What the hell was that? Let's check it out. Oh man, in, in tunnels. tunnels. This act is going on forever. We probably could have done. Whoa! F with it. Whoa! Oh, it won't degauss any further than that. That's it. You've already degaussed in the comatose. It won't degauss no more! You rush down that tunnel with Joseph and Lula close behind. How do you like all this, kid? A lot of reading, but I'm really good at that anyway. The tunnel narrows, and soon you find yourself crawling on your hands and knees. Navigating the tunnel gradually becomes more awkward as smooth rock gives way to jagged, crystalline surfaces. Scratches and taps echo from the end of the tunnel, some short and piercing, some slower and groaning as if dampered by water. The tunnel opens into a large room. In crystal room. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Wow, wow, wow. Wow, we. Whoa. It's just like us. Whoa. It's the others. It's the interferers. You are in a large, irregular chamber. The walls, floor, and ceiling are covered with crystalline projections. Strangers are here, scraping black mold from the crystals. They look up when you enter. One of them seems about to speak. Finally! Let's listen to what he says. Oh boy, here we go. The stranger reaches for a box he's carrying and presses a plastic button. The box whirs to life, and a crackly voice bursts out something unintelligible, then slows to a deep gurgle. He looks at his companions momentarily, in confused disappointment, then he returns his awful gaze to you. Joseph flees through a tunnel to the north. Lula flees through a tunnel to the northeast. Follow Lula. You know where she goes. Hell yeah, Lula. Run north. Lula's headlamp scans across the northern passage as you run. Soft shadows loom perplexingly from floor to ceiling. You feel around to distinguish shadows from crystals, but eventually you find yourself cornered. You have hit a dead end. Oh. Who are they? Um, yeah. Comfort her or let's find a way out of here? I think we should comfort her. Comfort her. 
comfort Wilna. You reassure Lula that the strangers are harmless. Are you... are you sure? Maybe you're right. It sounds like they've gone back to work. All right, let's try to pass them quickly now. Don't make eye contact. Then we'll find our way back to the equipment. Weird. Yeah, that's creepy. 